Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you guys. Good morning to all of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for this blessed day. Another blessed day. Another day that we woke up. Hallelujah. We thank God for that. God is a good God. He's amazing. He is an amazing God. I'm just giving some people time to come in. Hallelujah. We just thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. We thank you this morning. If you can, share the broadcast. Share the broadcast. I'm just allowing some people to come in. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We just magnify you this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So today, this morning, we're going to be talking about the dangers of fornication. And that's what God gave me to speak on this morning. The dangers of fornication. Um, okay. So can you guys see me? Are you guys able to see me? I just want to make sure you guys can see me. But sometimes this thing be tripping. Come on, put her in there. Oh, she, so now it can be quiet. This thing be tripping sometimes, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm trying to let me get it together. I'm trying to still figure out how to do uh, Zoom. I'm paying for the service and I can't even get no help. So I got to figure it out by myself. Okay, good morning, everyone. God bless you this morning. We are going to be talking about the dangers of fornication and um, the definition of fornication and why God does not want anyone fornicating. God bless you, every single one. Ebony, God bless you, Minister Ebony. God bless you, Pastor uh, Michael. Elder Carmen, Evangelist Cynthia, Prophetess Maisha, God bless you guys this morning. God bless you guys this morning. Share the broadcast. Share it to some of your friends. Tag them so they can hear what the Lord has to say about what's going on here with this um this fornication going on. Elizabeth, God bless you this morning. So we're going to okay. I'm gonna start. I'm going to read, uh, for, the, for this, we're going to have to read this. I, I know sometimes when you get on here, there's certain things that I need to read before we start because we don't want to be uh, attacked. Hallelujah. We just thank you, Jesus. We cancel every negative words into our life this morning. Limitations 3, 30, 37, numbers 23 and 8. Um, hallelujah, Father, we just thank you this morning for your goodness and your mercy. We just ask you, Father, that you would just bless each and every person that's on this live today. I pray, Father God, that you cover them with the blood of Jesus. I pray that you will protect them. I pray that you would just open up our hearts to learn, Father, what you um, want us to learn, Father God. I pray that you would just remove me and you just uh, decrease that I decrease, that you may increase, Father God. I pray that the anointing will destroy every yoke this morning, Father God. If there's anyone, Father God, that's going to listen to this recording later, Lord, that they will be set free and deliver and understand the troubles of fornication, Father God. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. God bless them. Protect them, Lord. I pray uh, Lord's got it up about the truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Feet shot with the preparation of peace. Shield of faith, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. This is the inheritance of the servants of the Lord. We thank you, Father, for, for protecting us. Father God, creating us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us, Father God. And show us how to love even the more, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, they've been tripping lately. Um, I don't know what's going on with Facebook, but they keep this up. I'm going to YouTube. They've been tripping. A lot. 
and I'm not the only one. There's other people that are saying the same thing. I don't know what's going on with them. I don't know what the issue is, but um, it's been a problem lately. So we're going to have to do something about that. If they uh, don't correct it, it's, I'm just going to have to go to, uh, I'm going to have to go to YouTube and it's fine. You, you guys will still be able to, um, to hear me. God bless you, Lupe Santos. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, so blood of Jesus Christ, wash me and make me whole. Make it, um, my maker and my father have mercy on me and deliver me from every satanic pronouncement. My God and my father arrest and paralyze every evil tongue raised against me. Holy Ghost fire locate and paralyze every tongue pulling me down. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every evil worded program into the sun, moon, and the stars to limit my destiny. Holy Ghost fire paralyze every witchcraft word issued to reduce my life. Every word spoken against us this morning will never make it. Make it in life, receive fire, and be canceled. Every word spoken by any man or woman, Father God, uh, against us will never make good in life, receive fire, and be canceled. Don't ever think that people is not speaking against you because they are. People, people, they'll say stuff, and we always got to cancel what they're saying because we're not going to receive that, period. We're not going to receive it. Every word spoken by any relatives to keep us at one place, receive fire, break and scatter every evil word issue against us in the night to limit our life, receive fire and be canceled. Every evil word issue in the day to limit us, receive fire, break and be canceled. Every curse issued against us by our mother and our father, receive fire, break and be released now. Holy Ghost fire, break and scatter every word limiting us from our place of birth. We release ourselves from every evil word issued against us from our father's house Whosoever that is renewing evil words against us day and night, receive stones of fire, be exposed and be wiped away. Every witchcraft pronouncer made against our destinies, receive fire, scatter to pieces. Every occult degree raised to pull us down, scatter and be canceled. O Lord, our Father, arise and let your plan and your word stand in our life. Every word spoken by the strong man of our father's house against our life, break and be canceled. Every evil word that is limiting us, your time is over, receive fire and be canceled. They that wage war against our greatness, Holy Ghost fire, blood of Jesus, pull them down. Blood of Jesus, paralyze every word spoken against us by the water spirits. Every word spoken and sealed with the blood against us. Our destiny, receive fire and be broken. Every secret word and bargle, tell, t uh, tying us down, break and be scattered to pieces. Holy Ghost fire, locate and wipe away every personality cursing us day and night. We fire back to senders every evil word and decision raised against us. The blood of Jesus Christ cancel every word or written to stand against our life. Every evil pronouncement blocking our open door. We see fire be wiped away. Oh, Lord, our father, open our great doors to our doors and restore our glory unto us. By your power, oh, Lord, we reposition ourselves for excellence. Anoint us for the, with the spirit of excellence, Father. Our maker and our father, we write every statement concerning our destiny. To your glory, O oh Lord, we must become who you created us to be. And we, we, we should speak good things about ourselves each and every morning. Amen. We speak good things about ourselves each and every morning. So um, we're going to talk about fornication. What is fornication and why is it a biblical sin? Fornication is both spiritually, intrinsically, a different sort of an interaction from the marital act. That's why the consequences are so so dire flee from fornication every sin that a man does is without the body but he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body and that's first corinthians 6 and 18 the the definition of fornication the bible definition of fornication is from the king james dictionary fornication is defined as sexual immorality be ye therefore followers of god as dear children and walk in love as christ also have loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covenants, let it not be once named among you. As belongeth, uh, as belong, I'm sorry, as becometh saints, neither filthiness nor foolishness, talking nor jest, uh, jesting, which are not convenient, but rather given of thanks Ephesians 5 1 and 4 and then this is what is fornication it says Christians talk a lot about premarital sex 
And I think that that's a mistake. I don't think that is a mistake because the issue is unimportant. But because the grammar is skewed, the word fornication is almost gone from contemporary Christian speech. It sounds creepy and uh, anti-graded. Instead, we talk about absences and premature sex. According to Russell Moore, the loss of the words fornicate and fornication simply suicides the moral imagination to the sexual revolutionaries because the words fornication and premature sex are interchangeable. Interchangeable. Fornication isn't merely premature. Premarital, it is the language of timing and with it will infer that is a simple demarital act misfired at the wrong time. Because God didn't make it that way. He, he wanted us to be married before we committed these sexual acts. But fornication is both spiritually and typologically a different sort of act from the marital act. That's why the consequences are so dire. Fornication pictures a different reality than the mystery of Christ presenting in the one flesh unit of covenant, covenantal marriage. It represents a Christ who uses his church without joining her. Coven, covenantly and permanently to himself. So man who leads a woman into sexual union without a, uh, a covenantal bond is preaching to her, to the world, and to him, her, himself a different gospel from the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is formerly a real spiritual union. The Apostle Paul warns, but one with a different spirit than the spirit of Christ. And that's 1 Corinthians 6 and 15. The dangers of fornication. This is important because the scripture makes clear that, <clears throat> excuse me, fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Revelation 21 and 8. The language of pre sex can enable a conscience to invade Repentance, after all, if the problem is one merely of timing or of waiting, of waiting, because God wants us to wait, then the problem is resolved once one is married. The event was in the past. This makes fornication even more dangerous in the sense than adultery. So fornication is more dangerous than adultery. Both fornication and adultery are acts of infidelity. But a man who has committed adultery, if he is repentant, understands something of how he's broken trust, attacked a covenant. He can see that even when his wife has forgiven him, he must invest years in rebuilding trust. So that's what happens when we fornicate and things happen. We, we, we you know, the trust is gone. He can understand why his wife concludes that if he cheat with one woman, why would he not cheat with another? And that's true. How many men, how many, you know, just like, you know, women go and they cheat on their husbands and then they marry another man thinking that this man is not going to cheat on them, but yet you cheated on him. So the Bible says you reap what you sow. So it's just going to continue to go on. It's going to continue to constantly go on. He can understand why his wife concludes that he, if he, he'll cheat with one woman, why would he not cheat with another? Then that's facts. He must work to show himself faithful. The fornicator can be deceived into thinking that marriage has solved the problem. No, he doesn't see the ongoing nature of the problem. This is an ongoing nature. Often he finds it difficult to lead his wife spiritually or to full, fully gain her trust. The root problem is a sin committed together, driving the couple apart. Because that's what fornication does. God bless you, woman of God, Dolores Hall. It, it, it causes you to, to, to separate from um, the bond the, and the covenant that you have with your husband if you're married. It, it just it breaks that. It drives the couple apart. Fornication and adultery. Moreover, she knows, especially if he pos, uh, pros professed to be a Christian before the marriage, that his lib uh, lib libido is stronger than his conscience. If he's able to justify his fornication, he would justify his adultery. They are not two separate things. 
but two different phrases of the same thing. So basically, if you're dating someone and they cheat on you and they fornicate, and, and this is before you guys get married, what makes you think when he marry you, anything is going to change? It's not going to change. And men and women of God, we need to open up our eyes to see what's really going on. We really need to see what's going on. Because we're not, we're, we're being deceived. We're being deceived for those that are doing it. Stop doing it. Those that are living holy, stay holy. Stay holy. Because it's a dangerous thing to do. Very dangerous. So we don't want to do that. We want to continue to uh, 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 stay, stay holy. So, uh, makes the fornic. Okay, this makes the. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back down to the Libya. Okay, if if he's able to justify his fornication, he would justify his adultery. They are not two separate things, but the two different phases of the same thing. Immorality, immorality, and contrast to the self-given and unity covenant of marriage. Ebony, can you share um share to my page? Can you tag me, please? I'm telling you, Facebook is tripping hard, y'all. They tripping. They really are. If you can tag me, I appreciate it. And the contrast to the self, and I don't understand why you want you wouldn't want people to come on here and talk about God and minister to 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 the people of God and then try to sabotage them while they're on here when there's people on here that's half naked all the time saying all kinds of things that they shouldn't be saying. I don't see them being flagged. That's really crazy. Yes, I said it. I said it. I said it. Because it's it, it, it's 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 it is what it is. It's the truth. I mean, come on. We ought not to be ashamed of the Christian language of fornication, but instead to be ashamed of fornication itself. That doesn't make us more uh, censor censorious when we speak honestly. We are able to speak with more liberally power to sinners, including sexual sinners. And our streets and sidewalks and pews, the blood of the, of the cross can cleanse any sin. But no one comes to the cross without repentance. When you speak bluntly and honestly, we lead people to the cross to repent, not just to be uh, rebanned. It's verses about fornication and sexual immorality. Hebrews 13 and 4, let marriage be held in honor among all and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. This is going to happen whether you want it to happen or not. Every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's going to happen. Whether you push it out your mind now and say, no, God's going to forgive me and all that. You don't know. You don't know if you're even going to have time to ask God for forgiveness. If something was to happen, if you were to be in an accident or anything, do you think you have time to repent? So we live this life thinking that we got tomorrow and we got the next day and we got the next day. We got the next five minutes, but no one knows. God is the only one that has the key to life and death. At any moment, any of us, including me, could be gone. <clears throat> God bless you, Pastor Amralitra. Flee from sexual immorality. Every other sin in person, <clears throat> excuse me, commits it's outside the body. But the sexual immortal person sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. First Corinthians 6, 18 and 20. But because of the temptation to sexual immorality, each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband. The Bible says if you if you can't contain yourself, then get married. 1 Corinthians 7 and 2. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, 
dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I warned you before that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. A lot of times we'll take the word of God and, and switch it up to whatever we want it to say. And he said, what comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of a man come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. Mark 7, 20 to 23. You are doing the works your father did. They said to him, we are not born of sexual immorality. We have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if you, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. And that's John 8, 41 and 42. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desires, and covenants, which is idolatry, Colossians 3 and 5. It is very dangerous venture to engage in premarital fornication and extramarital adultery, sexual relationships, which are fornication and adultery, respectively. Sex is a spiritual exercise and only allowed by God within the vows, covenant of marriage between a man and a woman. With uh, what is adultery? Sex with a married man and any other woman other than the man's lawfully wedded wife is adultery. Likewise, a married woman having sexual intercourse with any other person other than the lawfully wedded husband is adultery. You can say however you want to say it, however you want to put it, however you want to try to change the word of God. The word of God says it will not change. He is the same today and tomorrow forever. He's not changing for nobody. His word is not going to change. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. These are for those that say, God, you know, I, I, I'm good. I'm, a, um, um, God bless you, um, Minister uh, John Stewart. This is for for people out here. People say this all the time. Oh, you know, God, God knows my heart. God this that. But what First Corinthians six and nine said and ten says that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, infamate. Abusers of themselves with mankind, thieves, covenant, drunkards, revivers, extort, extortioners shall, in, shall inherit the kingdom of God. It's saying you will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not. And I don't care how you try to put it out there. You can, you can, you can deceive yourself, but the word of God is not going to change. The Bible also admonishes us in Colossians 3, 5, and 6, to kill all the lust of this world in our lives. This includes fornication, uncleanliness, and ordinate affections, evil con wait a minute, concubiousness, and covenants, which is idolatry. The reason is because all these, as well as others like it, attract the warm wrath of God on anyone that disobey the word of God by indulging in them. So these are for those that say that God is not a God of wrath. He is a God of wrath. And he's saying it right here. Colossians 3, 5 and 6. He's warning people. He's warning about fornication and adultery. Marriage is between a man and a woman. Anything other than that is a rebellion against the word of God, the perfect will of God as it was in the beginning. It is that a man shall leave his father and his mother, cleave to his wife, and the two become one body according to heaven's mathematics. This was evident in the scriptures as it says in Mark 10, 6 and 9. Also, God did not approve of divorce or polygamy. The word of God made it clear in Luke 
16 and 18, it says that whosoever puts away his wife and marries another commits adultery. So if you're married, you put away your wife so you can be with another woman, you're committing adultery. And whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband commits adultery. The word of God says, I'm going to read that again. It is clearly in Luke 16 and 18. It says, whosoever puts his wife and marries another. Why they are awake. Oh, um, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, and marries another commits adultery. And whosoever marries her that is put away from her husband commits adultery. What is fornication? Fornication is sex between two unmarried people. Both fornicating and adultery are very dangerous for God's children because they open an air raid of doors for satanic oppression and possession. Many believe, believers are going through nightmares while they are awake today just because of the consequences of their few minutes pleasure. Fornication and adultery also go beyond just premarital and extramarital affairs. It also includes pornography, masturbation, homosexuality, and all sorts of sexual perversion or immorality. Consequences of fornication and adultery. Number one, soul ties and soul frag fragmentation. There is a piece of you left as many sex partners as you have had in your life. Every time you have sex with somebody and, and people telling you that it, it's all good, you can do that and you're going to be okay. No, that's why sometimes you wake up, you don't even know why you're tripping, flipping and dipping. It's because you done got, slept with somebody with a spirit, the spirit of God on you. Now all of y'all tripping. You don't know why all of a sudden I, I'll give this testimony for myself because I'm very transparent. When I was out there doing what I was supposed to be doing. And yes, I was a Christian at the time. Okay, and some of us need to just come on and confess. Okay, yes, I was out there fornicating and I was safe, filled with the Holy Ghost. I was blessed. Everything was going good until I decided to go fornicate. When I began to, when I fornicated, what I found out, I started losing things. My money started going bad. Everything started going bad. And I'll say it like this. If you're if you're committing a sexual sin with someone who's not in God or even if they are in God and they have some type of curse on them, you best believe that curse is about to fall on you. You're going to get that saying, if they're broke, you're about to be broke. Because now you don't open up yourself to that one spirit or whatever spirit is going on. And I'm speaking for my own, my own experience. Somebody may have a different one, but that's mine. Many believers are going through nightmares because of a few minutes of pleasure. Fornication and adultery also go beyond just premarital and extramarital affairs. It also includes, oh, I already read that part. Sorry, you guys. So soul ties. There is a piece of you with as many sexual partners as you have had in your life, as well as fragments of their own souls conjoined with yours. People don't believe this. But here it is right here. If you have slept with a marine agent, a witch, a demon-possessed person, a person moving with multiple curses and poverty, be rest assured that you have part of these forces working against you and your destiny already. So you got to be careful. And, we, and this is this is in the body of Christ. This is going on in the church. And I know it's going on in the church because it happened to me. And not one person came up to me and say, uh, you need to be delivered. You committed fornication. No, they sat there, probably saw what was going on and didn't do nothing about it. I guess, I guess they said, well, we're going to leave her like that. We should not do that. If you see your sister and brother in a situation like that, we need to pray for them. We need to ask God for wisdom, talk to them, sit them down and privately don't embarrass nobody. God don't embarrass people. He doesn't do that. He don't embarrass anybody. If, there, if, it's some, if, it, if it's some type of correction like that, you know, he, he, he wants you to, you know, don't do that. Don't embarrass people. Because you never know when your turn is coming. And what I find is when you judge somebody, you best believe you're next. When you judge somebody in a situation, then you're about to be judged in that situation. And you may not like the way it comes out at all. So it's best not to do it. Don't embarrass nobody. 
Sometimes they're afraid to say anything. They don't want to, they, they're afraid. They don't want to come out and, because they don't want to be judged. And that's another problem in the church. They don't want to be judged. Okay. And who are any of us to judge anybody? We shouldn't judge them. Because we all got skeletons in our closet. Let's keep it 100 up, up in here. All of us do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we got things that we will never tell nobody about. If you have slept with a Marine agent, I'm going to read that again. A Marine agent, that's those spirits that we were talking about. Uh, 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 marine spirits, and we were talking about Python and Leviathan and, and Bizabulb and all of them spirits and the spirit of Jezebel. They all these spirits that are floating out here. A witch, a demon-possessed person, a person moving with multiple curses and poverty, be rest assured that you have parts of these forces working against you and you are in destiny already. Your destiny is already in trouble. If you slept with a possessed individual, you are automatically possessed even though you might not know it. And this is why we need discernment. This is why we need discernment. This is why when your spirit checks you, you need to listen to your spirit and get away from it. Don't question it. Because even when you're not saved, your spirit, something in us says, this is, don't do it. And this is even if you don't have the Holy Ghost, it's still, you, you have, we all have this instinct that says, don't do it. And we override it. And God loves us so much that I believe he warns us even when we're not Christians, don't do it. If we pay attention and listen, he says, don't do it. Lots of your virtues have been stolen from unsuspectly individual as a result. And that is a true fact. I experienced this. Your virtue, all of a sudden, they bless and you not. All of a sudden, you done gave your way your blessing. You were blessed before you fornicated. Now you ain't blessed. And they, they running around here getting all the goodies. And you sitting around here, what happened to me? Come on now. We got to be real. We got to be real with this thing. We got to be real with this thing. We got to know that God is a real God and he loves us and he wants to help us and protect us. One of the mysteries about demon possession is that many are possessed by the devil without any iota or knowledge. Some of them possessed don't even know they're possessed. Although in some, there may be signs and manifestations which they can may not understand. For example, their dream life. Some might be having serious nightmares. While some might be hearing strange voices in their head. You ever been downtown and you just see people walking around just talking to themselves? And we say, oh, they're just, it's a mental problem. No, it's not a mental, not all the time it's not a mental problem. It's a possession problem. And where's the church at with the power to cast it out? Right? Jesus, Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead. He left his anointing here for us. Greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. He said, greater things shall we do than he did when he was here. But we can't even go down there and cast nothing out because some of us ain't fasting, praying, and we ain't seeking the Lord, and we don't have the word in us. And then we are afraid. We need to get back to the power. We need the power of the Lord. It's not us. We can't do anything, but we need to get back to receiving the power of the Holy Ghost like he said for us to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. Because there are people waiting on us to be set free. And some of us have different callings, different people we need to reach. So, and some might be feeling some of strange presence around them. For others, it might be strange financial crisis or general failure. Mood swings, mood swings, depressions, heaviness, spiritual embargo, limitations, and general life afflictions. The word of God warned us in 1 Corinthians 6, 15 and 17, that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and they are belong to Christ, that our bodies will belong one with um, anything we join it with. And I, 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 I'm I, sorry, you guys, I have to, I have to go. I hear the Lord saying, and some leaders are doing this. Leaders. I hear the Holy Spirit telling me right now to say it. There are leaders doing this. And then you have the nerve to go lay hands on, on the people of God. Lord have mercy, Jesus. My God, 
that our bodies will become one with anyone. Oh, okay, let me see. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and they belong to Christ. That our bodies will be become one with anyone we join it with. Because the Bible says when you marry, you become one. When you when you become one person, so anybody you're sleeping with, you become in one. You're one with them. If you join it with a harlot, it will become one with the spirit of a harlot. If you join with a person possessed by evil spirits, you will inherit their evil spirit as well. If you join it with someone that has the spirit of infirmity or poverty, you as well inherit their infirmity or poverty. But if you join it with Jesus Christ, you will become one spirit with the Lord. This is why the Lord doesn't want us fornicating. Number two, it is a sin against one's own body. That means that it, it opens doors for physical affliction, which includes sickness, poverty, shame, dishonor, rejection, emotional affliction, depression, and failures. First Corinthians 6 and 18. We that we shall flee from fornication for every sin that a man does is without the body, but anyone that commits fornication sins against his own body. Three, it is the defilement of God's temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which God has given us children who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. When the temple of God is defiled, the Holy Spirit leaves because he cannot stand defilement, neither can he behold iniquity. And since the human body is designed to be a vessel for, for spirits, because that's true. When the, when the enemy attacks us or when he uses somebody, he has to use a body. He has to use a body to come against us. So whenever we're saying, I rebuke you or the blood of Jesus, we're not saying that against uh, uh, the person. We're calling out that spirit because it, the spirit needs a body to use. And leaders, pastors, we're leading you right. Leaders can be caught up like anyone else if they don't submit to God. They can. They can actually do that. They, as a matter of fact, they are doing that. I'm hearing the Lord. They're doing it. And God, and I hear God saying, if you you don't stop, you're gonna you're gonna be exposed. He's gonna put you out in the uh, he's gonna put you out on the platform so everybody can see. Because some people he already been talking to. And some think that the wife don't know, the wife don't know that the husband is doing it, but the wife already got a sense that you're doing it. And sense that you're doing it with someone in the congregation. And it's just a matter of time before the Lord reveals to the wife what's going on. And then the consequences after that. That came from the Lord. That didn't come from me. That didn't come from me. Uh, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which God has given us children who believe in our Lord Jesus Christ. When the temple of God is defiled, the Holy Spirit leaves because he cannot stand def defilement. Neither can he behold iniquity. And since the human body is designed to be a vessel for spirits, it opens the door for demonic possessions, afflictions, oppressions, and suppression. Just like what happened to King Saul when the spirit of the Lord left him. And it was replaced by an evil spirit which tormented him. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit because Jesus has bought it with his blood on the cross. Your body no longer belongs to you. It is now Christ. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Number four, it brings about spiritual and physical deaths. Fornication and adultery are virtual killers. They kill anything that is good about a man and his destiny. As believers, we are not supposed to associate with ourselves with either fornication or adultery. That's why the Bible is warning us to flee from them. Flee means to run away from them and never look back, having nothing to do with them ever again. It means run from your dear life, run, run for, for your dear life and for your destiny because they have nothing spiritually good to offer you. Only death and destruction for your soul and destiny. Death includes spiritual death, chronic stagnation, acute and chronic poverty, poverty, poor health, lack of divine helpers, uh, scar, scar city of divine revelation, spiritual death, lack of spiritual growth. 
Not growing. Not growing at all. Just stagnated. And the scripture says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 8 that we should not commit fornication as some them committed and fell in one day three and 20,000. Also in Proverbs 6, 27 and 29 says the Bible's, the Bible's liking fornication and adultery as pouring coals of fire into your body. It says, can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not to burn? Fornication is serious, y'all. It's nothing to play with. It's nothing to play with, whether you save or not save. But if you save, you should know better than to be doing something like this. You're, you're bringing curses in yourself. And then you go, you want everybody to pray for you so they, they can lay hands on you. And, 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 and why you're not financially blessed and why this and this and that. Well, you might want to confess what you've done and you might want to tell the truth. So then we, the, the, the person that's praying for you may understand exactly what they need to do. Because sometimes, sometimes the Lord don't show us everything. He don't. So just because we are, we prophets, just because there's prophets, he don't show everything. Some things is between you and him. So if you want to be set free and delivered, you might want to confess your sin. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet not be burned? So he that does it into his neighbor's wife, whosoever touches her shall not be innocent. Um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to say his name. I, I'm Ab. Abakshek in Genesis 23 and 7 was a good example of the consequences of fornicating and adultery. Even though he had not touched Sarah, but the intent was enough to bring curse upon him and his household. And because he was a righteous man, God had to prevent him from destroying his, his life and that of his household. God had to warn him in a dream by night, telling him that adultery will only bring him death and that he should de de desist from it or die with all the belongings to him, all that belongs to him. It brings barrenness, lack of fruitfulness, promotion, many stagnation and unfruitfulness are as a result of sexual immorality. A lot of believers are unproductive because of their indulgence. Genesis 20, 17 and 18 says that Abraham had to pray to God to heal. I can't say his name is Albim, Al Al Black and his wife and his mid, uh, maid servants for them to bear children again. For the Lord had uh, fast closed up all the wounds of the house of a, a I can't say it, Bimelech, Abimelech. Because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. What is the way out of what is the way out from the destruction power of fornication and adultery? Bring genuine repentance to God, ask him for forgiveness, confess all known sins and turn away from them, engage in serious deliverance prayers, ask God to fill you afresh with the Holy Spirit. Study the word of God daily, fast to build your spirit and to pull the flesh under subjection to the word of God and pray without ceasing Luke 21 and 36. Consistently praise, worship and thank God for his grace and mercy. A joint Bible believe it and spirit filled church and serve God in your capacity. And deliverance prayer. Thank God for his power to deliver you from bondage. By the power in the blood of Jesus, we break ourselves free from every spirit of sexual perversion in the name of Jesus. We release ourselves from every spiritual pollution emanating from my, our past sins of fornication, adultery, and sexual immorality in Jesus' name. We release ourselves from every ancestral pollution in Jesus' name. We release ourselves from every dream pollution in Jesus' name. Every demon of sexual perversion assigned against us. Be bound and get out of our life in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, let our soul be delivered from every force of sexual perversion working against us and our destiny in Jesus name. Break the hold of any power of darkness over our life in the name of Jesus. We notify every effect of of the bite of sexual perversion upon our life in the name of Jesus. Every evil stranger and satanic deposits in our life, we command you to be rooted, uprooted, and flushed out by the blood of Jesus. 
Holy Ghost, fire purge us completely in the name of Jesus. We claim completely deliverance from the spirit of fornication, adultery, and sexual immorality in the name of Jesus. Lord, deliver our eyes from all kinds of lust. Because fornication starts with lust in the name of Jesus. We move from bondage to liberty in every area of our life in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, for answering our prayers. We thank you for answering our prayers. And here are 10 reasons to avoid sexual immorality. Easy sex will keep you from being wise. To make this point, Solomon lists 10 consequences of sexual immorality in Proverbs 6, 24 to 35. Before um, we urge you to read the passage yourself and see how the consequences you can observe. Perhaps making your own list will help you to remember these things when you have you facing this temptation. You participate in evil to preserve you from evil women, from the smooth tongue of the adulteress. And this is Proverbs 6, 24. And morality is evil. Temptation is an invitation to do evil. But wisdom preserves the wise from evil. When you believe that the smooth and deceitful promises of immorality, you choose guilt by association. And how many people we know are in jail right now because of guilt of association? You are now evil as well. So, and that's what they do in the court. If you're associated with someone who's a gang member, whether you're a gang member or not, or you're a gang member, that's, that's, that's point blank, ain't no getting around it. If you're, you're stopped in a car with a gang member, a documented gang member, and you're just riding with them, and you're just dro dropping them off, and the police stops you, and they find out that he's a gang member, then all of a sudden, you're put in a, a database that you're a gang member. And that is facts. I know that personally uh, to be a fact. I also do advocacy for, um, I, I work with a, a group that does advocacy for people that are in jail. And we they talk about this all the time. So you, your company that you keep, you got to be careful. Even if it's innocent, the system don't care. They don't care. And my son, they actually documented my son in the police and court said the reason why I did it is because he was with him. He was giving someone a ride, but because he was giving someone a ride and the person was a gang member. So now we're going to document you as a gang member, which is truly unfair, but that's how our system works. So the way that system works sometimes is the way spiritually, if, if you listen to what this says, immorality is evil and temptation is an invitation to do evil, but the wise preserves the wise from evil. When you believe the smooth and deceitful promises of immorality, you choose to be a guilty by association. You are now evil as well. Your desires will take you captive. Do not desire her beauty in her heart and do not let her capture you with her eyelashes. Okay, I don't care what y'all do. Y'all can wear the eyelashes as big as you want and all that. But you know, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Proverbs 6 and 25, I ain't going to say nothing about that because people like wearing eyelashes. So I'm not going to say that, but they captivate you. Spirit of Jezebel, captivate you. It was for freedom that Christ has set you free, but immortality seeks to enslave you. Capitulation will become easier and easier. Resistance will become more and more difficult. Far better for you to rid your heart of these fantasies while you can. Fantasizing. Oh, look at her. She got a body of a Coca-Cola. Oh, so I, 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 I've seen that. I, I, when I'm in clubs, I see men looking at women when they walk past and looking at them. And, and then all of a sudden, they buy them drinks. And then all of a sudden, they leaving them, going home with them. And the woman don't even know that all they want to do is have sex with them. Not, not knowing that they're going to be attached to these demons. And then next thing you know, if the man is a whoremonger and the man sleeps around and the woman doesn't, all of a sudden she's sleeping with everybody. She wants to sleep with everybody because you don't you don't attach your spirit to this person. And this person got this spirit and this person want to do everything you're doing because you became one. The cost becomes low, only a loaf of bread, but with diminishing returns. You will need to give more and more until your very life is forfeit. And more tea hooks you while it's cheap. A glance here, a touch there. But before you know it, you can't sleep without sexual release. You simply can't keep your hands off and you lose everything in the process. 
And this is about fornicating. Whether you like it or not, whether you want to put this in your own words or, or change it for your own, you can't because the word of God is backing it up with the word of God and his word is true. Your punishment is inedible. Can a man carry fire next to his chest and his clothes not be burned? Or can one walk on hot coals and his feet not be scorned? So is he who comes into his neighbor's wife. None who touches her will go unpunished. Proverbs 6, 27 and 29. You can't tick her with immorality and hope to escape. You may be able to cover it up. And that's what we do. We cover it up. We cover it up. We sit up in the church. We do it. We cover it up. Some of us call people husbands. They're not even your husband. You ain't even married to them, but you say that's your husband. Well, in God's eyes, it's not your husband. <clears throat> You're just fornicating. Because you have to be joined together as husband and wife. So <clears throat> whether y'all been together 20 years and you not married, you still not, you still fornicating. Period. Period. And I have that going on in my family too. But it is what it is. All you can do is tell people. You can teach them and guide them. But they have to make their own decision. You can't force anybody to do anything. Only God can show them the way. You, you, you just be the vessel. You love them. You, you show them the way and that's it. You may be able to cover it up for a time. For a time. But you will eventually be found out. God sees everything and he is a consuming fire. You can replay what you've stolen. People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his appetite when he is hungry. But if he is caught, he will pay sevenfold. He will give all the goods of his house. A jealous husband will accept no uh, compensation. He will refuse though you multiply, multiply gifts. Proverbs 6, 30, 31, and 35. The point is not to justify the theft, but it's to condemn sexual immorality. People can't understand a thief's motives, though they still make him repay what he stole. How much less will they understand you when they find you out? Perhaps you rob your present or future spouse of your best love and attention. Yes, because now when you do that, when you fornicate and you, okay, you waiting on your husband and you asking God for a husband. And of course, um, you meet someone and, and you guys like each other and you guys getting to know each other and stuff like that. And you fornicated and you committed this adultery. You're cheating yourself and him because now I say this, I don't think the Lord is just going to release y'all to get married when you got all these spirits in you and this person is whole and you're not whole. And because two people should join together, they should be whole. So both of y'all should be whole. So if this person is not whole and you got all these spirits and now you're trying to join with this person, I, 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 this is my understanding. I don't think God would do that. I, I, that's just me. I could be wrong. Though they make him repay, he stole. How much less will they understand you when they find you out? Perhaps you rob the present, the future of your spouse, of your best love and attention. Maybe you steal someone's innocence. Or perhaps you continue supporting the hor hor horrific porn industry, which destroys young women and holds them captive. Pictures are never harmless. We must not lie to ourselves. Pictures are harmless. They're harmless. They come back and haunt you. You lack sense. He who commits adultery lacks sense. Proverbs 6.32 There goes wisdom and along with it life, peace, and satisfaction and joy. You'll destroy yourself. He who does it destroys himself. Proverbs 6.32 We do it because it feels good. But like an alcoholic who destroys his liver or a smoker who destroys his lungs, we kill ourselves with good feelings. It feels good to do it. Easy sex is all about self-gratification. But Jesus said that he who loves himself loses himself. 
Wisdom pierced these feelings to find the truth. You created your own wounds. He will get wounds. Proverbs 6.33 It's like touching a hot stove or using credit cards to spend money you don't have. Or picking a scab. Or playing hot scotch on the interstate when you know cars are coming back and forth. Or hurt or hurt for it. Uh, you'll hurt for it later. And you'll have brought the hurt on yourself. So a lot of times we blame everything on the devil. Oh my God, Satan, Satan, Satan. We give him more glorification when it's not even him. It's us. We making bad decisions. And then we want to you, you blame God or we want to blame the devil. But it ain't him. It's you. It's you. Your lust. The spirit of lust. You'll find dishonor and disgrace. You will get wounds and dishonor, and his disgrace will not be wiped away. Proverbs 6.33. You set yourself up for consistent reproach and bad name. You'll always be that guy who ran off with the girl and ruined a good thing. Family ministry career. Y'all seen it in church. I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen. You lose every time. For jealousy makes a man furious, and he will not spare when he takes revenge. Proverbs 6, 34. Sexual immorality rightly infuriates jealousy. Husbands will not spare one on the, on the day of revenge. How many women have been killed because of this? I, I'm not sure if it's more women that have been killed or more men. But to me, it seems like it happens both ways. But mostly, I think men, men, they, 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 they lose it. But if your immorality doesn't involve seducing a married person, then there is no jealousy to fear, right? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord, Romans 12, 19. Remember that God, the great husband, has a special place in his heart for those with no human protectors. So if you're a single woman or a single man, God, is, God said he's your, he's your husband. He's a protector. He protects you. You can't watch your back when it comes to him. If you like me, you have already fell in the sexual realm. Take heart and remember there's always hope in Christ. He provides a way out this. <clears throat> he provides a way out, out for us. And this um, and the list that we just read is not to cons consign you forever to guilt and punishment, but to warn you from the future folly. It's to warn you. It's to warn you about the spirit of fornication. Fornication is a serious thing. We don't like to talk about it. We don't want to talk about it. We want to push it up uh, 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 under the rug. And some people, some leaders don't want to talk about it. They don't want to really put their foot down because they don't want to lose members. But who are you trusting in? The members, money, or God? Because if God move everybody from your church and there's only one person in the church, God's still going to bless you because if you're living right, right? If, 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 if God was to clean up, clear out your whole church and you have one, nobody but you. I'm just giving an example, y'all. I don't know. God will still take care of you. But we're afraid to lose members and we're afraid to, to tell people what they're doing wrong because we don't want to lose members. But yet still... What you're doing is it's like cancer because that person is doing this. And then if you're allowing this person to sit there and, and lay hands on people, because I've seen it too. And then they're passing that spirit into somebody else. And this is just spreading like a cancer. It should not be happening. It's time for the body to get it right. And I don't know why God is so tough on the leaders right now. He is tough on the leaders right now. He wants the leaders to get it together. Because people are watching. They're looking. They're watching you. And you got babies in the church and they're watching you. And if it's okay for you to do stuff wrong, they're going to think it's okay for them. And you're going to cause them to fall and God's going to deal with you. Amen. So I pray that this bless somebody. Um, I, and, uh, you know, if you guys want to talk about something, I want you guys to inbox me. Um, I know God gives me things, but it might be something you want to talk about. It might be something you want me to talk about. Just tell me, and then I will 
I'll do my research and I'll come and talk about it. I'm still trying to work on uh, Zoom to try to get you guys in so you guys can join me. So this weekend, I'm going to try to figure out how to get on here. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk to this technician that I know and see if he can help me. Because at this point, real talk is about you guys coming in and talking too. It's not about just me. It's about you guys coming in and also sharing. And that's what I want you guys to do. I would like you guys to come and share. It's nothing. Don't be scared. I don't want to be on Facebook. No, you need to come and share because it's going to come a time that you're all going to be on Facebook. You're all going to be preaching. You're all going to be teaching and you're going to be in front of people. So you don't worry about people. You just get on here and do what God said. So this weekend, I'm going to work on getting this thing figured out what's going on because I don't understand why it won't. I can't figure it out. I've been there all this week. I've been trying to figure it out and I've been calling Zoom. There's no help. So um, I'm going to get some, a technician to help me um, to, to figure out what's going on here. And then uh, Monday, I'm, um, like I said, we could talk. I need you guys to tell me what you want to talk about. Today was fornication. Is there something else you guys want to talk about? Is there any other uh, uh, sin that you guys want to talk about? We need to talk about it. People need to know. Fornication is dangerous, whether you like it or not. It's dangerous. You're 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 setting yourself up to have demons in you. Oh man, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's it's deep. This is so deep because you get these spirits. I'm telling you, I've been through it, you guys. I could sit here. I'm not telling you something I heard. I'm telling you something I've experienced. You sleep with these demons and, and then you turn around and don't know why you tripping and why you emotionally all crazy and, and why your, 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 your body craving things that you shouldn't be craving is because you done got you a spirit in you and now you got to get that, God got to get rid of it. Got to repent, get it off of you, get it off of you. Amen. So God bless you this this morning. Thank you for being on here. I, I, I bless you guys for being so faithful and, and, and supporting me. I thank you for that. And um, if you guys want to talk about anything, let me know. Um, and, I, and we could talk about it. But I'm hoping by Monday this thing is fixed so I can get some of you guys on here. I, I know I asked Cynthia to come on. I asked Ebony to come on. And if there's anybody else who wants to come on, just come on. Let's talk about these things. Don't be ashamed of nothing. Don't be ashamed of anything that you're going through because you're not the only one. Just like me, I had a DUI and I was uh, saved. Yeah, who was going to judge me? Who going to cast the first stone? Like you don't have nothing in your life. Yeah, bring it on. Because I know I, I'm not the only one. There's people out here dealing with this. And we, we, don't, we, we don't know why they're doing it. It's none of our business. What we need to do is minister to them, help them. Period. That's it. Self-righteous people need to just... Not do that. Oh, she used to fornicate and she used to drink and she had a deal. Why would she would say, yes, I did. And who are you to judge me? God got me right here after everything that happened. And I'm here to help somebody else. To let them know not to do it. To encourage them that they don't have to hide. There's help out here. And they don't have to be ashamed or go up to the pulpit and be with their head hanging down because they're afraid of how people are looking at them. We living in a new day and this is a new time and a new generation. Let's get it together. Amen. God bless you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I think I got a long day today, but I, 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 I enjoy talking to you guys. I really do. I really do. I like I like teaching you guys. I just want to teach you guys. We are going to do that book. He came to set the captives free. Um, the book is really, really, really cheap. If you guys want to follow me on the with the book, I think the book is no more than two dollars. Like on Amazon, it's called "He Came to Set the Captives Free" by Rebecca Brown. Um, I don't know if somebody can type that on there. Um, is "He Came to Set the Captives Free" by Rebecca Brown? And um, it's in Amazon and it's really, really cheap. And I want to teach you guys. I want to read that. I want to read with you guys on this book because I think that this book is going to open up your eyes to more than what you already know, like more than we already been talking about. And it's going to help you. 
It's going to show you both sides. It's going to show you the demonic side, but it's also going to show you the power of God. And it's awesome. Amen. So um, if you want to get the book, um, it's in Amazon. Like I said, it's really cheap. Uh, maybe $2, I think. I, I, I know it's less than $5. It's cheap. And um, if not, I, we can I, I read through it and go, go along with it and stuff. And um, oh, actually, actually, you guys can Google it. You can go to Google because I've seen it on Google before. Go to Google and look up. He can't accept the captives free by Rebecca Brown. And it, it, and, and it might tell you there's a PDF for the book. Then you won't even have to buy it. We can just go through it together. But I do want to start with that. I want to start with that book. Amen. Unless God changes things. God bless you guys. Have a blessed weekend. Oh, let me finish. Oh, my God. See, I'm about to leave without praying a protection prayer over y'all. I can't do that. We got to pray that protection prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Protect them, Father. Angels of protection prayer, according to John 14, 14. We ask you, Lord Jesus, to loose your angels in great abundance in their lives, their presence, the presence of everyone we have prayed for today in our homes, cars, trucks, lands, properties, buildings, workplaces to protect us, guard us, and to force out, drive out, to cleanse out all evil, wicked demons, tormenting spirits from our presence, our homes, cars, trucks, lands, properties, animals, and workplaces, and force them into the abyss and any replacement thereof, and they cannot return to us. Lord Jesus, we ask you to create a hedge of protection of your angels around each of our minds to loose your mighty born angels around each of us, our homes, cars, trucks, lands, properties, animals, workplaces to protect us from the enemy. And we ask you ask to do this according to John 14 to 14 and Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. God bless you to this morning. God bless you this morning. Uh, God bless you, Michelle Marie. God bless you this morning. Um, you guys can always go. God bless you, Letty. You can always go back and um, listen to the, the video. And uh, God bless you guys. I hope you guys have a blessed weekend. Amen. Bye-bye.